hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on empirical evaluation so this lecture is uh, 101 on uh, different evaluation methods and how to evaluate uh, a computer systems or other processors memory uh, keeping performance power and uh, security in mind so the moment we uh, talk about evaluation we have something in mind either a system or a machine or a processor so for this course it can be uh, a single core machine or a multi core machine and you want to evaluate the performance of that machine or you want to evaluate the power consumption of that machine right and uh, how do we evaluate we actually evaluate by running some applications which are also known as benchmarks we'll go through that later in uh, the future videos and at the end of the day we should have some metrics that will say that okay because of this metric this particular machine is better or this particular processor is better right and uh, then we'll jump into the world of uh, simulators uh, later but to start with let's understand the two uh, crucial uh, knobs for performance evaluation and then then uh, which kind of play a big role in um, computer architecture uh, performance is called the latency and bandwidth so latency is nothing but the time it takes to finish one task okay so it can be termed as response time you start something at time t you finish at t plus delta so delta is your latency right on the other end bandwidth is the number of tasks per unit time it, it, it's actually the throughput that that uh, kind of gives you the notion of what can you do at a given point of time right uh, so throughput is not additive so which means if i have two hardware units let that say my processor and then let's say my dram and let's say they have their individual bandwidth let's say 10 gbps okay and even dram is also operating on 10 gbps per se. this is just for an example uh, it may not uh, be the reality so we can't just add both the bandwidth and say that okay the processor and dram they are actually interacting with the 20 gbps uh, bandwidth no on the other end uh, latency is additive for example a processor takes 10 cycles to finish something unless the dram takes additional 10 cycles so then in total the total latency should be 20, 20 cycles right so if, if you want to understand the notion of latency and bandwidth in an abstract way, you can take the help of uh, this image, the image of a pipe, and you can assume that the time it takes uh, from this end to this end, let's say water is flowing through this pipe, whatever time it takes uh, from this end to this end is actually the latency. And uh, the rate is actually, uh, or the bandwidth is actually uh, the rate at which you are pumping your water. So I, I would uh, suggest going through this particular link for uh, reading various uh, issues or various interactions between latency and bandwidth. Uh, it's a good read, uh, a bit dated though, but but uh, nonetheless it's a good read. So to understand uh, how latency and bandwidth affect each other, uh, let's take a simple uh, example. So. In most of the cases latency actually helps bandwidth okay to understand so for example if i'm improving my dram latency that means let's say my dram latency uh drops from 100 to 50 cycles right which, which means i'm improving my bandwidth right i can uh, respond more and more in less unit of time but this is not the case when we talk about uh, improving bandwidth so whenever we talk about improving bandwidth it is applicable to all, all areas of computer systems uh, networking os database architecture we usually add queues or buffers so they help us to improve our bandwidth okay but uh, by adding them we are actually increasing the latency which is not a good thing right so eventually your, your turnaround time or the response time will uh, go up right so as you can see a uh, high level interaction will be latency usually helps bandwidth but but uh, not vice versa 
So uh, if you are more curious about understanding uh, these interactions uh, from the computer architecture uh, point of view, go and look at this video. So this is a, a keynote given by Professor Yale Part uh, at one of the conferences called ICS. Uh, the takeaway from, from all these videos and then whatever you read uh, on latency and bandwidth is, bandwidth problems are relatively easier to solve. So if you need more bandwidth, you can just add uh, more and more, uh, you know, pins or buses or whatever. It is similar to uh, creating your expressways or highways, right? Uh, where, where you create multiple lanes, uh, that improves the throughput. More vehicles can go at a given point of time. But latency problems are harder, right? You can't, uh, you know, change the notion of speed of light. It's like uh, basic high school physics. So uh, if, if uh, the the, if the latency or, or the uh, latency from one place to another place is kind of uh, you know uh, fixed, no matter what you do, you can't change it, right? What you can do maximum is you can actually send multiple uh, vehicles, or you can actually try to improve parallelism so that the bandwidth will go up, but. Uh, unless you come up with a different route from place A to place B, uh, latency problems uh, won't be solved, right? So we will look at uh, the notion of uh, all these problems later in the course in detail, but at this moment, you can assume that uh, latency problems are much, much harder than the bandwidth problems, okay? So most of the bottlenecks that you'll see in the field of computer architecture are mostly uh, latency or bandwidth bottleneck if you are considering performance as your objective you want to improve uh, or you want to design a high performance processor let's say or, or high performance memory system let's say right and uh, we, we need uh, ways in which we can actually identify these bottlenecks and then work on them so that we can improve the final uh, overall turnaround time or overall throughput so one of the uh, simple, intuitive, and obvious uh, way of looking at uh, these problems is through Amdahl's law. This law is actually not a law, it's a pretty straightforward, simple English statement that says, make your common case fast, okay? So what does it mean? So let's take an example. So let's say I have a program and 50% uh, of the time, I actually go to memory. So let's say this is my processor and this is my DRAM, right? And for 50% of the time, I go to DRAM, let's say to get the data, okay? So this is just an hypothetical example. And uh, the rest 50%, uh, you operate with registers, so there is no need to go to uh, the memory or the DRAM, right? So now if you have an awesome idea that tries to improve the execution time of your application or the turnaround time or the response time of the application then the overall speed up that you get with the awesome idea will be limited by what speed up you get for the 50 percent that you are going to the memory okay so more, more uh, the fraction the better will be the overall speed up for example if your processor is uh, is completely memory intensive that means for every operation it goes to memory that means this particular fraction will become zero right because 100 percent of the time you are going to memory and your idea is actually dealing with the memory idea is here represented as the enhancement right so for 100 percent of the time you are actually improving your uh, dram access and then that that has a direct impact on the overall speed up right Let's take uh, another example where let's say DRAM accesses contribute only 10% of the accesses, right? That means I'm improving only 10% of the accesses that are going to DRAM. So even if you get a 2x speed up on that particular uh, DRAM accesses, your overall speed up will be limited by this ratio. Why? Because you are improving 10% of the DRAM access, but rest of the 90%, right? Sorry, rest of the 90%, one minus 0 0.1, okay? 
they are completely unaffected so so the your execution time is only improved by 10 uh, like you you are trying to improve only 10% of the accesses and that by uh, 2x let's say right so you can plug and play different numbers here to find out uh, the the you know what exactly is happening and and uh, why some decisions should not be taken or should be taken right so at the top level view what Andal's law provided us it just makes sure that we, we solve the problem and not somewhere else but the problem which actually matters to the final execution time right so for example if, if i ask a simple question right which one of this uh, will provide the better overall speed up right Will you do small speed up on large fraction of execution time or large speed up on small fraction of execution time, right? The example that I gave in the previous slide. So if you are, you know, improving, let's say 10% of your access time, your DRAM access latency was, let's say 100 cycles, now it became 90 cycles, okay? And that you are doing it, let's say for 100% of the time, right? So that's a big jump, right? So overall it will lead to 10% speed up. But compared to that, if you are improving um, your DRAM accesses and that, that DRAM accesses is actually just a fraction of uh, the entire program, let's say 1%, right? Then even if you improve that 1% of DRAM access by let's say 10X, your final speed up won't be uh, that much. It won't be a big jump, right? So in general, it's, it's actually the option A where we try to find out small speed up on large fraction of execution time, right? So that finally it will uh, show up in the final speed up equation. Okay, so with that, I'll stop. Thank you.